They are extremely subtle, very sly, intelligent, inorganic, uh, soulless, but very smart deities or first principles that uses a guile, deceptions and whispers, therefore casting spells over the human mind, human life, human soul to try to influence it. Anyone who is not awake is directly being impacted and uh, we eventually behave like an automaton for the benefit of these them gods. Through such wiles, these nefarious deities are now shaping the destiny not only of individuals but of the whole earth and perhaps of the whole galaxy on their existence as well as the victims of their subtlety are missing out on understanding their identity and incredible potential. Welcome to Kamiti Hebrew Ethics. Let us look at these topics and if you are interested in delving deeper, visit us and enroll into our Bantu foundations through our Bantu University portal found at www.marifado.org. These non-human entities, why do they operate in secret? What is it that they want from us? The gods who secretly ruin human lives. Where are they? Why? And how can we defend ourselves against them? Remember, the kingdom of heaven is within you, and whosoever shall know themselves shall find it. This is an ancient Hamitic saying. The gods secretly ruining lives try to block you from knowing your identity. Let's start first at looking at one of these gods, El, predominantly who comes from Northeast Africa. There is a statue of the chief god of Ugaritic pantheon El seated on a throne and raising his hand in benediction. It's found in Ras Yamra in Syria. The religious texts of from Ugarit as interpreted by scholars show and give us the best witness to Canaanite religion and religious practices and therefore to the background from which the religion of Israel emerged. And when we know that these beliefs were adopted, compromised with and sometimes rejected by others, at that time, we will identify how these nefarious forces have behaved. Scholars around 1929 to 1930s, they also were able to decipher about the story of El in Canaan. This is El and this is Israelite Yahweh. We merged together and is the God of Israel today. This El was adopted by the Hebrews from the Ugaritic pantheon. His name actually is Elohim, which also became the common Generic word meaning God, which is God today. In the Hittite, Ugaritic, Paleo, Hebrew, Canaanite, and Aramaic languages, like in Mesopotamia, this El was called Father, Father of Humanity, King, and described as the Ancient of Days. He is also known as the Compassionate One. You remember he had that somewhere? And he is known as an old bearded man. And connected to Baal too, who is the God of fertility, lightning, and thunder. The Assyrian cylinder also shows Dagon or the fish god. You see, it is clear that Dagon came from ancient Hamid, was adopted by Christianity through the purpose as well as the fish symbol that is known all over Christianity. Therefore, we have been able to trace this god and we want to continue to look at the illustration of how this L is secretly ruining your life if you are not awake and lives of billions across the ages since he was adopted and uh, promoted uh, by deification. The El is Yahweh. According to the Canaanite myths, El's marriage to Beirut, the city, produced heaven and earth. In the Bible, when you see God, it is translation of one of many versions of El. Elohim, sons of God, or many gods. El Shaddai, God Almighty, El Roy, God of Seeing, El Elyon, God of the Mountains. When you see the word Lord capitalized, it is a translation of YHWH, probably pronounced today as Yahweh, which means I am, which means a being. Though these names are often used interchangeably, some consider that this God came from the Canaanites and the one from the Canaanites. These gods merged in the story of the Exodus when Moses was given El as I am who I am. Before this moment, it is known that this El was worshipped by Abraham, adopted by Abraham, introduced to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see, El Elam, El the ancient one. The Lord, the everlasting God, Abraham planted a tree 
a tamarisk tree in honor of this god at Beersheba. That is in Genesis 21:33. El Shaddai, the god of the mountain. That's why others are going into the mountains to worship this god. El Elyon, the most high. According to Deuteronomy 32, 38, he divided the nations according to his sons, but they then changed to according to the sons of Israel. So when you look at El, he looks exactly like a melanin dominant deity. We would call him a Mondoro, not Combre. There is a very important reason why we are pointing out this fact. Let's look at this other issue now as we continue. We see here on the left, that's the Hittite figure, Baal, the Canaanite god El and Megiddo in modern Israel, 1400 BCE. And this is Roshupa, the deity Roshupa of Bible's 19th, 18th century BC. Then Yahweh would emerge and emerge with El. Now we know that this is the God worshipped by billions. But another deity would be created. Every nation envied Africa. Every nation wanted the civilization that was in Africa. Therefore, when Alexander the Greek conquered Africa, one of his generals, Ptolemy Sota I, became the ruler of Northeast Africa and uh, under the threat of actual genocide forced our priesthood and our priests to create a god as they knew our ancestors were able to create a god you call it tokolosh our ancestors were able to do that and they did they combined the bull apisa the one who burns and Ausari, the ancestor came up with serapis and this is serapis who is the christos also known today as Jesus Christ, who began in ancient community 350 BCE and was then adopted when the Romans conquered the Greeks in 135 BCE and became the Greco Roman Christus. But he was a little bit regional. We shall show how he became global. At the end, the Greeks built a great temple called Therapium. Now we know that there has never been a man that ever walked the earth. In human form of any race, creed, or color by the name Jesus Christ, that is Serapis that you are worshipping. So the Romans conquered the Greeks in the, after the Punic Wars, 146, and then eventually the Roman Emperor Constantine made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire in 313 AD and they began building churches. So Christianity originated in the Roman Empire as their control system. Very, very clear. But they had to put in their God, and their God was Jesus. The disciples never considered Jesus, according to the stories we find in the New Testament, as God. It was Constantine in the year 325 AD at the Nicene Creed who manipulated and changed the nature of Jesus Christ to become homosia, meaning one substance with the Father. Bishop who opposed it had difficulty, some were killed. When they say one with the Father, which Father? One with the Earl. Yes, the Greco Romans who according to the Gospels make their deity whom they met Jesus to pray to the God who pre-existed Jesus known as El or Eloi or Eli while on the cross which is clear if you read Mark 15:34 and Matthew 27:46, Jesus cried in Aramaic calling upon El Eloi Eloi or Eli or Eli or El Oh, Lama Sabangtan, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which God? This is El, the Canaanite El. He has now come and is now combined and is now the God of Jesus. So, Jesus' desification was not smooth because a lot of scholars at that time knew that Jesus was a created deity. But now, he has been solemnized in through this Nicene Creed with the spirit of El and now used to dominate the whole earth. The Nicene Creed proves that. Dr. Arias, in the 4th century, a presbyter from North Africa, is best known for his attitude in rejecting Jesus Christ as God. In one of his famous quotes, in a letter that he sent to Eusebius of Nicomedia, he stated that they were being persecuted because they say that the sun has a beginning. The real creator has no beginning. But that God is without beginning. This is the cause and this was the cause of their persecution. And likewise, they also said he is of non-existent. And this is what they said 
that he was neither there in the non-existent, but that Jesus was a created creature and does not have a part with the Father in the in existence, in non-existence. Therefore, if you want to understand this story and the many nuances around it, please get our book Free from God from Amazon, in which you will discover that the real gods are self-generated. They self-generate themselves out of the waters of Nunu. Therefore, all these other gods are empowered by negative deities that also came from the waters of Nunu. This created deity, Jesus, became one of the gods secretly ruining lives. He never existed. It is very important. The gods secretly ruining lives continue to be shown and approved that they indeed were man-made. Justin Maita, the grandfather of Christian apologetics, sought to bolster the case that Jesus was divine. Sadly, he lets the cat out of the bag by arguing that Jesus was like others who came before him. God in the flesh. The word of God. The word who is the first birth of God was produced without sexual union. And that he, Jesus Christ, their teacher, was crucified and died and rose again and ascended into heaven. He said, we propound nothing in you from what you believe regarding those whom you esteem sons of Rosiku. Tokolosh. Let's look at other gods before we conclude our talk. Mammon is a European deity, the god of greed, materialism, and consumerism. Mammon is often personified as the god of wealth and greed. Modern society is obsessed with money, power, and material possessions. And this can be seen that it is the unconscious worship of mammon where energy is directed towards wealth accumulation at the expense of spirituality or at the expense of helping others. It's connected to another god, Baal, the father and the ancient father and the ancient god of fertility, of profit by any means, power and earthly dominion and earthly dominance. You can see it even in the stock exchange. The money, again, wealth and greed, is a, power, is a powerful deity. It comes from ancient Canaan, comes from ancient Canaanite religion, comes from ancient Hamid, the negative aspect, the aspects of Shatter, the aspect of Apophisa. Important aspects of this today is that the power structures where individuals or nations exert control, slavery, warfare, and many other forms of unconscious force causes a lot to worship power with energy channeled into maintaining those powerful hierarchies. Aphrodite or Venus, the god of love and eroticism, the modern obsession with beauty, romantic love, celebrity worship, and sexual allure can be traced back to the worship of deities like Aphrodite, Aphrodite the Greek one, or Venus, the Roman one, in a world dominated by social media where appearance and sensuality are often prioritized, people unknowingly direct their energy towards these ideals in a sense of worshipping and also of adoring and loving uh, these. That's the works of hell. When you look at technology as a deity, it is a modern god. That's very clear. Everybody is obsessed with their cell phones, with their smartphones. 44% of American adults admit that not having their phones gives them anxiety. Political ideologies, extreme dedication to political beliefs or leaders can resemble a form of worship where the ideology or that leader is revered almost and worshipped like a deity passing that energy to El, El, the god El. Even the issue of nationalism and the state and the continent and the pride of a race. In that context, it resembles the energy and it's actually the energy through patriotism and national pride that you are passing on to these gods. The gods of war and bloodshed, this is clear, have caused many, many wars and destruction on the earth. So the spirit of air is the power that is behind the secret government that is running all over this earth from which the awakened one are away and are fleeing from. 
Let's look at four clear proofs that shows the need for you to ponder and to live a life of being awakened as an awakened soul. Unseen influence in global conflicts is caused by these gods. World wars caused by these gods. Conflicts, cycles of conflicts, continuous cycles of conflict in a world where people are saying are civilized. The turmoil, the suffering, the manipulation, the punishment that is suffered by the innocent is feeding these gods. Manipulation of natural disasters, even through technology like a app, the occurrence of natural disasters such as earthquakes, floods, pandemics. This is a way of exerting control over humanity and continuing to relieve and to live upon the perpetual suffering of humanity. Good and evil mixed up. That's ill. The idea is that ill is preventing us as humanity from achieving true peace and harmony and fostering conditions that lead to widespread suffering through even psychological and spiritual distress in which people do not know their value and think that they are valueless. So our interpretation is empirical. The evidence is clear that there is a malevolent influence on the earth and the suffering and the death feeds some dark force. The interpretation provides a framework for understanding the horrors as part of a broader supernatural agenda. Certain deities, certain entities being worshipped today unknowingly by millions and millions are the ones that are causing us to continue in this vicious cycle of generating and directing our energy towards our own enemies. Our ancestors warned us in the America and said the good gods would leave, leave the power to humanity and humanity will sell that power to evil deities and the evil deities will cause us into reckless crimes, into wars and robberies and the frauds and all things hostile to the nature of the soul, which is very clear, which is happening. But we have the ability to defeat this. That power is within you. If you want to discover this power, you have to know Afro Salvation Steps. You can also enroll into our Bantu Foundation courses to discover how you can activate that power. It is important that you use our email, join at Marfato, or visit our website. Till we meet again, stay well, stay safe, subscribe to our channel, like our videos. Your hammer ninja to a people's channel by LMT Sukrikin Karanja says, Yes, you can win against anything. Ameni.